Hello, and uh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be able to talk to you guys today. Just gonna pull up my PowerPoint here. It's about 100 degrees here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona today. <laughs> it's a warm day. There we go. Okay, like I said, my name is Brianna Hackworth and I'm presenting this on behalf of myself and also my uh, co-researcher, Robin Swartz. We're both master's students at Midwestern University and we did our research project on the direct comparison of four biocompatible circuits with, um, and we used SEM to look at the two beans. We have no disclosures to report. So before I get into the actual research that we did, I wanted to talk about the patient physiological responses. So as we know, when the scalpel hits the patient's chest, the clotting cascade begins, specifically the extrinsic pathway, which is caused by tissue damage. So when the tissue factor is exposed, that activates another cascade that then will eventually form a clot. And then the intrinsic pathway of that clotting cascade is activated once that blood hits our circuit. So once we activate bypass and the blood is going through our circuit, that's activated by that surface contact. When this happens, you're gonna get clots, but also you're gonna activate the inflammatory responses of the patient. And that includes edema, cell death, lipid preoxidation. Um, and some ways that we as healthcare professionals are able to minimize this is with the use of heparin or other anticoagulants, but also the biocompatible circuits that we're using tries to minimize that response as well. And off to the right is just a little review of that clotting cascade that I did um, speak about. So the codings that we looked at, we looked at four different ones, three by Medtronic and one by Terumo. In the upper left-hand corner, we have Corteva Bioactive Surface. This is a heparin-coded surface, and it alternates anionic and cationic polymers, providing that thromboresistance. Next to that in the upper right-hand corner is Balance Biosurface. This is a non-heparid coding surface that uses hydrophilic polymers. And in the bottom left, you have trillium, which is heparin coated. And it's very similar to the balanced biosurface um, as it still uses the hydropho hydrophilic polymers. The difference is one is heparinized and the other one is not. And we also looked at the X coating by Terumo. This is a non heparin based. And it uses amphiphilic polymers that have hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties. And that forms a surface boundary layer. Now, one thing I did want to mention here is that there is very limited information on the composition and manufacturing processes of these, of these tubings. So getting information was a little bit difficult on these. So the design process of our experiment, we got together with different faculty members at Midwestern University. Dr. Darbin is in the perfusion department, so he sponsored our research and uh, helped us conduct some of it. Dr. Mitchell is in the dental department and he provided us with access to the SEM or the imaging machine that we use to take the images of the coatings. And uh, Dr. Estenvari is in the biomedical department at school and she was key in helping us not only uh, formulate a good um, circuit design for studying, but also had really good input on the biomedical side of it. We discussed methods of measuring the adhesion, um, looking at the images, but also uh, blood draws as well and looking at the lab work. And we talked about different lab access. Dr. Mitchell was very kind in allowing us to use his SEM machine. For those who don't know, it's a very expensive machine and it's, in, it's, it's really locked down at our school. So the fact that we had access to that machine was great and we really appreciate that. And we had access to our perfusion wet lab as well. The materials that we used were bovine blood and the circuit components were donated to the school and the fixation supplies were donated by Dr. Mitchell as well. And something that I would, would like to point out is that the budgeting was, this was a student budgeted uh, project, so that was a little bit limited. And how we, how we thought about what we wanted to accomplish with this experiment was, the, if you see the images on the right, this is from a paper 
that we found. And you can see the oxygenator strands here. You can see some adhesion here on, a non, on an uncoated um, circuit. And with the balanced biosurface, there isn't as much adhesion. So this is what we were looking for when we set out to run this experiment. These are some control images that we took without any blood run through the samples. This is just the images as they were. You can see they all look, they all look pretty different, which was surprising to us. And we found a section of uncoated tubing in our lab, so we decided to um, put that under the SEM as well. And we thought it was funny because it kind of looks like plant cells a little bit. So the methods. Like I said earlier, we did use bovine blood. The anticoagulant that we used was the citrate, and we didn't use heparin. And the reason for that was that the citrate was used at the slaughterhouse when the blood was collected. And so for that reason, we didn't want to use heparin and mix those different anticoagulants because that's not something that you would typically do in an OR. Um, we also measured hematocrit and we primed with normal saline. During the pump run, we measured flows, pressures, and RPMs. And the total run was 50 minutes. And we took blood and tubing samples at 10 minutes, 37 degrees, 30 minutes, 30 degrees, and 50 minutes, 37 degrees. So this is typical of a short bypass procedure where your patient's going to be normal thermic, and then you'll cool the patient and then rewarm them to normal thermia at the end of the procedure. Um, we'll talk about the fixation processes and the imaging in just a little bit. I, over off to the right hand side is a little circuit design. Right in um, off to the right hand side here is where we would take the uh, samples from. And we did use a Hoffman clamp uh, to simulate patient pressures as well. So this is a photo of our circuit design. Each trial, we did try to keep the height of the reservoir as well as the height of the centrifugal head the same as much as possible, as well as the tubing length. The tubing length did vary a little bit just depending on the pump pack, but we did try our best to keep that uniform throughout. And this is a photo here of where we would actually take our samples from right there on that right hand photo. So the tubing sample and collection process. With, off to the right hand side, you can actually see our sample of tubings that we took. And we would have to process each sample in increasing concentrations of alcohol. And the reason that you had to do in slow increments of increasing alcohol, if you were to put it in a too high of a concentration, the cell integrity would actually be compromised due to the alcohol pulling fluids out of those cells. So we put it in increasing concentrations of alcohol and we processed them in glutoaldehyde and then applied a gold coating per SEM protocol. Now we also took those blood samples at the same time that we collected the tubing, um, the tubing samples. And with those blood samples, we measured hematocrit, platelet count, white blood cell counts, and more. But one thing that really stood out to us was the platelet counts. And as you can see, the trillium imbalance biosurface, the platelet count stayed relatively similar throughout the whole 50 minute trial, where X-coded and Cortiva did fluctuate um, as the trials went on more than the trillium imbalance biosurface. So we did think that that was really interesting. In fact, a first year student named Brian Wynn uh, elaborated on this and used TAG to look specifically at balanced biosurface. And um, what he looked at was the platelet preservations. For those who are not familiar with TAG, it can tell you a lot, but what we were focusing on was the maximum amplitude or the MA value, which is the measurement of clot strength. Now that's this value right here between these two lines. So as we know, platelet preservation is, is very important to prevent post-operative bleeding. So this is really important that he went ahead and took this next step to look at this. And what he found was in the raw sample here is, is considered a normal clot strength. And after a 50 minute trial run, the MA value was still within normal range. So that's really important because not only are those platelets being preserved, but they're also functional after that 50 minute trial. So how did we measure the coverage of adhesion? If you look at the images on the left, it's a little bit overwhelming. It was a little bit difficult to 
be able to measure this. And so we spoke to a statistician at by, uh, Midwestern, and she helped us determine that a 750 magnification would be a good a good magnification to be able to quantify, but also if you took five photos down the length of the tubing, it would give you a good idea of the coverage throughout that whole tube. So five photos per sample were analyzed and in total 60 photos were analyzed. So how did we analyze this data? We used an image uh, software called ImageJ. It was recommended us to doc by Dr. Mitchell who uses this software quite a bit. And how ImageJ works, it uses color differentials and in order to show a base and then also anything that's on top of that base. And so you could see the dark here on the left-hand side would be the base of the tubing and any of the white are the adhesions that you would see. And then on the right-hand side, this image is the image that had been run through ImageJ and it'll give you a percentage of that adhesion. So here, in the next few slides, I'm going to show you the results or the, the images that we got, some of those images. And instead of showing 60 photos to everyone, I decided to show on the left-hand side the lower range of adhesion and on the right-hand side the high range of adhesion. So you can imagine that the average is somewhere in the middle. So this is the Corteva bioactive surface. And this is the balance biosurface. Trillium. And X coding. Now, something that we did want to point out here is that the image on the uh, right hand side, this one, is actually an outlier in the group. Uh, but we did want to stay true to showing the low end and higher end of adhesion, so we did still show that. But most of the images for X coding look similar to the one on the left. So what are the results of this? On the chart on the left here, you can see the time and temperature intervals and how they varied within each um, circuit. And on the right-hand side, you could see the average of all the time and temperature intervals together. So Trillium had about 37% coverage of adhesion. Balanced biosurface had about 24%. X-coding, 15% and Corteva had 67%. So this is really great information, but is it significant? And the answer is yes. So we once again utilized our biostatistician at school and she gave us the chart on the left and a lot of other great information. But as you can see in the green line here, this is the Corteva and that did have enough adhesion to be considered statistically different than the other codings. So in conclusion, molecule adhesion is occurring on all of our circuits. Corteva did have the most with about 67%. X-coding had the least with about 15%. More research and trials need to be conducted. And one thing, uh, some discussion points that we ran into, not only while we were running the trials, but after the trials, when we were putting together our papers and abstracts, we talked about the citrate versus heparin. And the reason that we did use the citrate, like I said, is that's what was used at the slaughterhouse when the blood was collected. Something else that we discussed is the uh, clotting lifespan. And we were only had, had access to one heart lung machine during this, during this trial. And so it was, even though we ran the trials as soon as the blood came to our lab. The first trial compared to the last trial, we talked about potentially that this, the first trial would have more clotting and uh, the platelets would be more activated versus the last one where the blood had been sitting for a little bit longer. And the image processing, in an ideal world, we would love to get a lot more images down those uh, tubing sides and be able to process that and quantify that. Um, unfortunately, the time and resources just weren't there to get to get more. And a tip to tip coverage. Um, the circuits were all the same coding except for the Corteva centrifugal heads. We did have to use Corteva centrifugal heads on every trial, and the reason for that is that's the only one that uh, fit into the um, our heart lung machine that we had access to. 
So even though that section of the tubing was technically different, we did keep it similar throughout all the trials. And here are our references that we used. And I just wanted to say a special thank you to Dr. Darbin for uh, sponsoring this research and uh, letting us bombard his office all the time with questions. And also a special shout out to Robin, my research partner. Uh, he's been wonderful for the last two years. I couldn't have asked for a better research partner. Thank you so much for the opportunity for me to share this research. And uh, thanks. is there any questions?